Welcome to our time of scripture reading and devotional reflection for Thursday, August the 18th, 2022. I'm Brian J. Monroe, pastor of Kitimat First Baptist Church, and this is coming from my office there in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. I have three passages of scripture to read today and a brand new psalm for our repeated or uh, a meditative psalm. We're uh, on Thursday now, so that changes. We're still reading semi-continuously from the Old and New Testament, now moving into Jeremiah from the prophet Isaiah, and still continuing with Hebrews in the New Testament. And there will be, of course, a devotional at the end of this from Oswald Chambers, My Utmost for His Highest. Psalm 71, verses 1 to 6. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be to me a rock of refuge to which I may continually come. You have given the command to save me for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel man. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually for you. From the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 6, verses 1 to 19. Flee for safety, O people of Benjamin, from the midst of Jerusalem. Blow the trumpet in Tekoa and raise a signal on Beth Hakarem, for disaster looms out of the north and great destruction the lovely and delicately bred, I will destroy the daughter of Zion. Shepherds with their flocks shall come against her. They shall pitch her tents around her. They shall pasture each in his place. Prepare war against her. Arise and let us attack at noon. Woe to us, for the day declines, for the shadows of evening lengthen. Arise and let us attack by night and destroy her places. For thus says the Lord of hosts, cut down her trees, cast up a siege mound against Jerusalem. This is the city that must be punished. There is nothing but oppression within her. As well as a well keeps its water fresh, so she keeps fresh her evil. Violence and destruction are heard within her. Sickness and wounds are ever before me. Be warned, O Jerusalem, lest I turn from you in disgust, lest I I make you in a desolation, an uninhabited land. Thus says the Lord of hosts, They shall glean through as a vine the remnant of Israel, like a grape gatherer pass your hand again over its branches. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ears are uncircumcised, they cannot listen. Behold, the word of the Lord is to them an object of scorn. They take no pleasure in it. Therefore I am full of the wrath of the Lord. I am weary of holding it in. Pour it out upon the children in the street and upon the gatherings of young men also. Both husband and wife shall be taken, the elderly and the very aged. Their houses shall be turned over to others, their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, declares the Lord. For from the least to the greatest of them, everyone is greedy for unjust gain, and from prophet to priest, everyone deals falsely. They have healed the wound of my people lightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. 
Were they ashamed when they committed to abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed. They did not know how to blush. Therefore, they shall fall among those who fall. At the time that I punish them, they shall be overthrown, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it and find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. I set watchmen over you saying, pay attention to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not pay attention. Therefore hear, O nations, and know O congregation, what will happen to them? Hear, O earth, I behold, I am bringing disaster upon this people, the fruit of their devices, because they have not paid attention to my words, and as for my law, they have rejected it. And now the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 3 to 17. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son and daughter whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons and daughters. For what son or daughter is there whom his father does not, his or her father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons or daughters. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees, and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one sees the, with wit, sorry. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled, that no one is sexually immoral or unholy, like Esau was, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with many tears. Let us pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for this, your eternal and beautiful word. Thank you for the good and gracious and generous provision of it to us. And may you grant us also the power through your Holy Spirit to receive it, to hear it, to know it, to understand it, to have it work in us what is good and pleasing to your will. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, Oswald Chambers' devotional for today, which is entitled, Have You Ever Been Expressionless with Sorrow? When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. The rich young ruler went away expressionless with sorrow. 
he had not a word to say. He had no doubt as to what Jesus said, no debate as to what it meant, and it produced in him a sorrow that had not any words. Have you ever been there? Has God's word come to you about something you are very rich in? Temperament? Personal affinity? Relationships of heart and mind? Then you often, then you, you have often been expressionless with sorrow. The Lord will not go after you. He will not plead. But every time he meets you on that point, he will simply repeat, If you mean what you say, those are the conditions. Sell all you have. Undress yourself morally before God of everything that might be a possession until you are a mere conscious human being. And then give God that. That is where the battle is fought, in the domain of the will before God. Are you more devoted to your idea of what Jesus wants than to himself? If so, you are likely to hear one of his hard sayings that will produce sorrow in you. What Jesus says is hard. It is only easy when it is heard by those who have his disposition. Beware of allowing anything to soften a hard word of Jesus Christ. I can be so rich in poverty, so rich in the consciousness that I am nobody, that I shall never be a disciple of Jesus, and I can be so rich in the consciousness that I am somebody, that I shall never be a disciple. Am I willing to be destitute of the sense that I am destitute? This is where discouragement comes in. Discouragement is disenchanted self-love. And self-love may be love, and self-love may be love of my devotion to Jesus. Father, teach us these hard these hard tasks, these hard words, teach us these hard truths so that we can have nothing between us and you. Can we can simply be as Chambers says, a simple human being before you. Nothing to cling to except your love and your truth and your reality. We pray this to your glory, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. As always, friends, I commend you for sticking with me to the end here. I know sometimes these concepts take some time to turn over in your mind, but trust me, the Holy Spirit will help you. And until we're able to be together again to do more of the same, I bid you in the name of Jesus Christ, Shalom.